officially resumed. Uh, we're going to ask uh, Dick Ostop, the chair of the Public Building Committee, to um, explain to the Board of Selectmen the report. Thank you, Dick. If I can, I'd like to say it's my uh, honor to be serving the uh, Senior uh, you know, Memorial Subcommittee for the Board of Selectmen, along with other dedicated members and staff. Uh, it was quite interesting. Uh, the members of the stu this study committee were giving a, a, a dedication to do to look into four things. They had a program they had to do. So they were kind of limited to what they could do. However, the Public Building Committee, which started this project back on uh, June of 2012, uh, retained an architect, performed a needs study assessment with the staff, and some design options. We looked at many sites throughout Sinsbury and developed a number of preliminary costs. And also members of both committees visited a number of other active senior centers within the area, including Agawam and so on and so forth. And surprising enough, just for those that don't know, most of those, all of those, as a matter of fact, they visited were not located in downtown areas. They were outside of the so-called downtown. At our final meeting of the Board of Selectmen subcommittee, it was voted by nine members present that we should consider a new facility. And based on that, we were really given four, four areas to look at. One, the, the Bush, Hill, Stratton, Brook Road site. Another, uh, just a new site in the center of Sinsbury. Then a selected site of the Performing Arts. And then uh, one selected nothing, just a new facility. So I, I think the, the, the area that <coughs> was most concerned was that most people felt there should be a new facility. The Eno just did not work for the senior center. While the needs assessments identified a minimum space required of 22,000 square feet, which is available to Eno, but much of it has been reserved for the historic uh, space layout, the auditorium rotunda, the blue room, the DR rooms, uh, the auditorium. Uh, we felt that it really couldn't work out well for uh, the needs program that was available or that they wanted. Therefore, new construction uh, we thought would be required either at a new facility <laughs> and or an addition uh, to the Eno. When we looked at addition for the Eno, and of course you all heard earlier tonight, that parking became a major extent. So we started looking at a parking deck, and I know some people brought it up that uh, parking deck is one way, yes it is. But anyways, to make a long story short, uh, the committee I think would like to have a greater effort to look at perhaps more of a way from the Eno and not just pick on one site at this point. I don't think we looked at enough sites around that it might be available. And I think the committee would like to suggest that the Board of Selectmen authorize the Public Building Committee to further study uh, open area sites for a possibility of a new facility other than spending most of their time on the Eno. I think most of the committee feels that way and we feel that there are sites available down on Iron Horse Boulevard uh, along the way, I think there's, there's sites that could be looked at very carefully and come up with more uh, prevalent costs and programs. And I don't know if you, you, we've gone through a lot of things here. We have Rich sitting here, uh, be willing to go through our study that we did, but I don't think, I think we all did that. You had copies of that available to you. I don't know if that's necessary or not, but I'm here to answer any questions Thank that you. the board may have. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work, your committee, and to the subcommittee as well, and to everyone who attended. Does the board want to uh, hear the uh, review of the additional information that we had heard earlier from Rich? Any thoughts? I, th I, I was going to say, I think we've heard the presentation a number of times. Um, the one, I will say the one bit that came out most recently, um, and I can't remember, uh, Ed LaMontagne gave such a good chronology of, of all of the various reports that were done, um, but there was discussion about the phased in at Eno, and yet um, that aspect in a cost analysis was not part of what was provided to us, so um, I just throw out that as, okay. Spoke tonight, and a special thanks to the committee. Those folks worked really hard, and uh, Ed and others really uh, enumerated all the places they went. And I know it was quite amazing when they dragged them around on a bus halfway around the state to look at places. But it was very instructional and educational in terms of what's out there. Um, I do have the boards here. Basically, the 
uh, three major options that were looked at. If you do want to see them, I can run through them quickly. But basically, we looked at Eno, and the conclusion was that uh, in order to respect the historic aspects of the building, we had to put an addition on, and, um, and parking became an issue. A parking deck's a possibility. I, I do want to tell you, though, that what we looked at on the deck was not part of any of those committees' principal charges, so it was not looked at in depth. There are some other options. Uh, I want to emphasize it's a deck and not a parking garage. It, it's open, uh, the lower level is open at least half size. However, it will cost you. Don't let me kid you. They're not cheap. The second thing we looked at was a new building on a new site. Um, we did look at uh, some detail at Bushy and Stratton. However, the building we looked at is fa fairly generic. It could go on other vacant sites in the center. Um, as a little aside, we also did look at some existing buildings. And, you know, while we perhaps could go out there and make a firm offer, on the casual discussion level, most people's timing is very vague. Yeah, it's kind of a cool idea someday. And, you know, I think we're all at the point, after all the effort folks have put into this, that it's really kind of decision time. The decision we need is to pick a location. It could be general, if it's to be a new site in the center. And that would allow us, uh, through the Public Building Committee, to go forth, refine the design, to refine the cost estimates. And that's really what we need. We've been working on um, a needs assessment that looked at what had to be provided uh, from a prudent point of view, what the size would be. And then we put a number to it. But to go beyond that, and, and get down to a number that's more realistic. We need a choice of a site to look at. Uh, specifically to the question of Eno uh, with a smaller addition, uh, we did take a look at that. And what that would involve is a design that would provide for phased future construction or to use what in the business today is called distributed services. And what that means from a senior center's point of view, you would provide a building with all the most important core services, um, the, the food service, the kitchen, uh, <coughs> certain arts and crafts, um, medical screening. And then your services such as computer training, computer room library would in fact be at the library. Your outdoor activity space and outdoor performance space would be at the Performing Arts Center. So that works out very interestingly. That's somewhat of a new concept, but I think you do have the opportunity to do that here. And that phased in construction at Eno uh, was predicated on that idea, that we would actually put some things <coughs> elsewhere. And that option would be about a million dollars cheaper. So what we're looking at, and I'm only going to speak to the building costs, and that's very important. You get a lot of folks that get in the very heated discussions about what is the building cost and the project cost. And if folks want a happy face, they always tell you the building cost. If they want a sad face, oh, the project cost. <laughs> but those project costs are the area where you can really trim things up. And our traditional full build-outs in town, your so-called soft costs are about 30 to 40 percent. A lot. But those numbers can be played with um, a lot. So what I will tell you is just the building costs. Um, right now, the, the building costs alone, um, and these are this year's costs. We did project them ahead. Um, it, um, Eno, without the parking deck, um, you're around 5.1 million. A new site uh, would be around 5.2. Um, and the full build-out at Eno would be um, around uh, seven point something. So there are savings in the smaller design. And the assumption was that we would also um, completely excavate the back of that building and redo the parking lot, but a retaining wall along Railroad Street. You know, we could get more spaces. The optimum number of spaces is 100. We could not get 100 spaces. Um, what could you get? And we could get, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, we could get, right now there's 37, 37 and Double. we could just about double it. That's correct. 
And you picked 100 because that's 80 percent of 100 spaces work. is what works out for what you call your 80 percent design right. for infrequent peak usage type building just seldom build 100 percent because they wouldn't get used so much. So in our peak much. usage time we have 147. There would probably be some more so. yeah and of course a new site can lend itself to adding those spaces. And uh, some of the facilities we visited did that. In fact, Lebanon, I believe, did not build out all their parking. Right, um, right now, in terms of population, the Simsbury has about 7,000 people that are over 55. And over the planning period, 20 year planning period, we expect that to grow to nine. And, you know, that's very hard to predict. But if you look, that straight lining out the projections and what's been happening it's fairly reasonable right now for unduplicated senior center users at about 975 people a year to use that facility and that's not doing any double counting average daily use is about 144 and of those 970 how often are they at the senior center each day are they there once the whole year or are they there multiple times it varies a lot i mean your big programs down there as mona mentioned is your food uh, your meals um, your, uh, a number of your classes are very popular. There are performance events, musical events, very popular. Um, yeah, exercise yeah. facilities. Um, but there are a number of activities that are missing from our center that are indeed found at other facilities. One of the biggest ones, believe it or not, is, guess what? Who wants to guess? It's for the men. Billiards are a big yeah. deal. Every single center we <laughs> visited had a, a billiard facility, every one of them. And we went through a couple of the buildings that were basically vacant, except that building would be under full use, and ladies use it too. So that was interesting. Health screening is a very big deal. A lot of senior center, uh, senior folks like some of those screenings to be done privately and quietly, and nearly all the facilities had a health screening area. Not a big one. I mean, we're not talking the walk-in medical facility here. <laughs> Um, Eno also serves as our social services center. We don't have any really secure confidential interview space. And that's, that's a big uh, lacking feature in that building. Um, but I do think that phase program has some merit. But I do think that in the center of Simsbury, and as, as uh, Dick mentioned, if you looked at the, the total aggregate votes, it was clear that a new center is what would meet the needs. And people that picked the new center ranged anywhere from New Adino, which is basically the full build out, to the Performing Arts Center, the Stratton Bushy, and to any new site in the center. But the, and the vast majority though wanted a new site in the center. And we certainly have those sites. Um, we looked at the Performing Arts Center in quite a bit of detail. The Performing Arts Center is a very interesting location because you could get intergenerational activities going on, you could have shared spaces, but the Performing Arts Center site for your main focus, and this is in my opinion, has become too popular. If you go down there, I mean, you've got dog park people, boundless playground people, 298 soccer players at once. I don't know how they fit them all on there. But anyway, the place is very vital and active. So if there's anybody concerned with how folks are going to get in and out of the parking deck, well, exactly how they're going to get in and out of the Performing Arts Center on a lot of days is a bit of a challenge. But I think the Performing Arts Center could be a secondary location for certain activities. And you could get exercise classes in there, certain outdoor activities where you're not using the rest of the place. Good possibilities. We also looked at the um, Iron Horse Boulevard lots. Very excellent potential in there. Um, for either a full service facility or, again, a smaller facility that would do that um, distributed type activities where you could do your computer stuff at the library, you could do some things at Eno. Um, we've also looked at a couple other sites on the east side of Iron Horse. Um, I will be very honest with you that there are certain environmental issues over there. But in the world of picking projects, you do have to do some trade-offs. And interestingly enough, the wetland regulations allow trade-offs to be considered. So if we're going to look at Bushy Hill Stratton, look at the environmental values there, and look at some of the trade-offs along Iron Horse, well, those may be less impactful, and it would be a good choice. Um, 
So I think I've hit the populations. Operating costs. Oh, that was my question. Uh, yeah. We did not get into personnel costs because those very much depend on the programs. You could leave Eno with the exact staff you have now, supplement it with a lot of volunteers, and you probably wouldn't need any. On the building and maintenance side of the business, if I may say so, you probably need some more staff anyway, so you would be doing, they also do a roving maintenance now. They don't station people in the building. So if you gotta add a half a person and add a half more, it's not a big deal. So what I did take a look at was the um, utility uh, and operations costs in the buildings and basically a new building, um, a full service new building would cost around $60,000 a year to operate um, at Eno, depending if you did the phased in construction or the full construction, your operation costs probably run around eleven to 22000 um, other new smaller facilities I think would be less than 60000 but any of our new buildings would be pretty cost effective in terms of power and heat. Although it is interesting to note that Eno is a very efficient building in terms of heat, mm. little aside. Um, <laughs> well, some people have asked if we pulled out of Eno, what would we do with Eno? Well, quite honestly, Eno would go back to its traditional use, which really was a showcase community facility in town office. As if you're going to preserve those historic aspects of the building, um, you're not going to turn it into a real active 100% senior center of social service. You have the DAR room, which is dedicated, deeded use. You've got the beautiful rotunda. You've got a real high performance auditorium. Uh, you've got the blue room, which is, I would like my office there. Fireplace, the whole works. Basically, in terms of other use in that building that you could really chop up for a senior center, you only got four rooms in that place. The two rooms upstairs, two rooms in the basement. That's about it. But at Eno, you could put your performing arts, your regular arts, the DAR would stay. You could have uh, big performances in the auditorium. You could move the regional probate court down there, which we're pretty strapped for space in this building. Um, you could leave your SCTV there. In your phased-in program, you're assuming you're going to pull SCTV out of there. In your full build-out, you would keep them there at a lower level, which would be a black room type studio, which is desirable for them. So Eno could have many uses. It would not go uh, wanting for use. Um, what else was I going to say? I think that's it. Thank you, Rich. Discussion? Mm -hmm. Um, Rich, could you show us on your your chart there which other Iron Horse Boulevard properties you're talking about when you refer to other sites on Iron Horse? Well, they won't they won't all be on our board. But um, the other sites we looked at in the center, um, those here, they are up on the web. Mm -hmm. We looked at uh, in depth a total of six sites, but we actually looked at some eleven sites. In the center, we looked at the library. The library, at first glance, was a very exciting possibility. Yeah. But the library always has issues with parking already. Mm -hmm. And unless you want to get involved with a real heavy duty deed change, the library doesn't own much land. Scout Hall, for all practical purposes, owns none. Mm -hmm. So you could get into the forest in the back Belden Town Forest requires a heavy duty deed change. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking more of the Iron Horse Boulevard. The, uh, we looked at a uh, location on Drake Hill Place, just mm -hmm. south of Iron Horse Boulevard. Even though when you drive by there, it looks pretty big, it's uh, highly impacted by floodwaters and mm -hmm. rail right away and a lot of. And so you say, well, we can get the rail right away. There's major communication cables in there, mm -hmm. big bucks. We then looked at the Performing Arts Center, which I described in some detail. We looked at two sites on Iron Horse Boulevard in the lots. Mm -hmm. um, and while we didn't look in real depth at this, we looked at the corner of um, Drake Hill Road and Iron Horse Boulevard. There's a large parcel in there. That's a very interesting looking site. It would require some environmental trade-offs, so 
but it's quite between buildable. The, and the, sewer the sewer plant, yeah, between their driveway. It's an interesting site. It has a little brook on one side that you could preserve. It has a high uh, tree background to the north, but I don't want to kid people. There's some wetland issues, and but you'd have to do the trade-off. But the wetland regulations allows you to do that, and if you do mitigation, I think it's worth a look. Um, so I think, and, and just, I don't really want to name the buildings we looked at, but um, there were some interested building owners, but were they able to move quickly? And I really frame that word quickly due to the fact that these folks have been looking at this study for three years. So if you can tell me, yes, they'll decide in two, three weeks, well, that's cool. I don't think that's going to happen. And by the way, the first senior center study, where'd Don go? It wasn't done in 1913. <laughs> <laughs> but your first study was done in 1988. And there's only a couple people who remember that. And I will tell you, the end results ended up the same place we are tonight, with virtually the same sites. But again, their conclusion was Eno certainly had a lot of merit. They did look at a couple alternatives. But if you want to build it into a full service senior center, at least based on the other ones we looked at, it, it won't be free. So, um, I said, uh, the other site that we looked at that everyone keeps talking about, kind of avoiding in their conversation, is Ironhorse Boulevard directly behind Fitzgerald. Everyone keeps talking about that. Parking is for the bus stop. We looked very carefully at that, and it would, we think it would be an ideal site. However, it is not owned by the town, it's owned by the state of Connecticut, and that is a major problem. Well, Richard said several times there's been some negotiations going on there, and we're still not sure where that is. So that site also is very popular by anyone that wants a new site, but again, it's being held back by the feds or the state in reference to the old track that went through there. We do believe that the state, in principle, has agreed to release that land, and they'd probably be fairly well inclined to release it for municipal purposes. If we pushed it harder, we and, have uh, But that's something that I know our planning department's been looking at, and I think the state's mainly been looking for a use. Um, if that site were available to you, is that yeah. a site you would prefer I would. over the other ones? I, uh, that's obviously an excellent site. Um, Although, you know, when you look at the center studies, it has been indicated a lot of mixed uses go down there. They're highly buildable sites. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you that every site we look at has an angle to it. Right. The Iron Horse Boulevard lots also have this great big fiber optic cable right through the middle of it and about a 36 cent sewer line. So there's always a little quirk. <laughs> but the operative Amazing. word here is it's all about trade-offs. Trade so if we're looking to preserve natural contiguous forest land, well, I guess we're going to have to move a sewer. What am I telling you? There's not one silver bullet one out there that's going to cost you a half million bucks. Speaking of that, very important. With the grants we have, Representative Hampton, with the donations and with money we have appropriated, we have close to a half million dollars to move on to the next stage. I mean, that would pay for full design, uh, geotechnicals, utilities, and some construction. The other important thing to note is that every now and then there seems to be a little baffledness about where's the money coming from. We have $5.75 million programmed in our capital program for fiscal year 16. It does need voter approval, but the fact is, in terms of how can we afford it, that is programmed in and meets the 7% guideline on our debt policy. So the monies are programmed. And sometimes you got to look at this from the point of view of opportunity because I'll, I'll cut to the chase. I mean, I bet you I could save that money, but I bet you won't. You'll reassign it. And I've had people say that to me. We can't afford the senior center because we could use that money for something else. So that's kind of my editorializing, but I think the opportunity is here. And again, these folks have done an excellent job. All of these reports, by the way, are on the town website. You can all look at them. They're complete. Um, the only one that's not is a 1988 study. This is probably the last one. I would love to see activity. that, actually. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I have hard copies. Jeff, Jeff Shea back here is uh, 
ably taken my place. He has all hard copies in his office if anyone wants to see them. Thank you, Rich. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent job. Excellent. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, further discussion? Do we have a motion? Okay. Yeah. At what point does the Board of Finance jump in here and say how much the board of it's the capital the processes the board of selectmen has put the capital 5.7 as rich said in our capital plan yeah, it's in it's there. there the board of finance has reviewed it they've um they are aware of it we uh, it does fit within the debt level so the funding is there so they would have to approve it but the funding is part of the capital plan to answer that more directly is the board of selectmen authorizes the public building committee to do abc whatever it is mm -hmm. we then <coughs> the our amount that then goes back to the Board of Finance. Right. That's what the Board of Finance is. So there's a placeholder until we recommend it. Right. right. So the Board of Finance could come back and say, no, we have this other project. We need to work in the same time frame. You can only spend $4 million, not $6 million. But, and then we're but the Board of Selectmen have, would have to approve that. Right. right. Yeah. So it they can't be done in mm -hmm. unilateral. Yeah. Just a comment, Mary, too, <coughs> on uh, Rich's uh, in talking about the capital capital improvement plan um, and I wish I had brought that information with me tonight I know we reviewed a lot a lot of that during the budget process and um, some scenarios and I think the one he's speaking to included bonding for 15 years for some of those projects and um, being in an exceeding scenario um, of the 7% if we stuck to a 10 uh, 10 year bond so but I just think it's included the school projects it was the school projects that didn't fit not not the uh, the senior center. The senior center was the smaller project. It was the school projects that didn't fit. Another, now, yes, but I mean, the recommendation for 15 year bonds was for the school projects, not, not the senior center projects. That's right. It, though the approval that we would have to make would be on the projects for the entire year that would include sort of all of those things working together so that something would have to be bonded for 15 years. But it was only the size of the school projects is why it didn't fit, not, <coughs> not, the, not the senior center. Yes. Generally, any projects under six million will fit pretty well. As soon as you start taking a single project over six million, that becomes right. a challenge. Yeah, right. no, so I am. Yes, yes. it would be a ten-year bond project. Yes, I understand. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is, that as we look at the CIP plan, and as we were given scenarios of Plan A and Plan B, all of those projects in that plan at this point, if we were to fund and keep to our seven percent debt policy, would require us to bond something at fifteen years versus ten. So I just I think it's important that the public knows that that's, you know, it, it's it's a fiscal policy that I don't feel comfortable with to go beyond um, ten uh, beyond ten years, and um, you know a lot of people speak to the fact that these projects are. Um, have a useful life that's greater than that, and so that can justify the bonding for that. But we also know that there's many projects that continue to come down the pike, and um, if we were to have bonded a lot of projects we've approved already for those, those longer periods of time, we wouldn't be in a situation right now where we could afford to bond some of the things we're looking forward to bonding. So. Well, that's a philosophical discussion it, because, yes. you know, we uh, rates have gone down, so had we bonded for a longer period of time, we actually would be saving money. So there's a lot of different things to say. And I think a lot of people made some good points tonight. The fact that we are reducing taxes next year is because of a lot of hard work and cutting on the Board of Ed side, but primarily because the Board of Ed enrollment is declining. And so I think what we're seeing is uh, three quarters of our budget is the Board of Ed budget. Mm -hmm. So without the Board of Ed uh, reducing their budget, we would not have had a tax decrease because we decreased the town budget the last six years. I mean, you have been in office and taxes haven't gone down because uh, we have seen increasing budgets on the, on the Board of Ed side, which is three quarters of the town budget. So uh, the fact that the senior center isn't a placeholder, the fact that it is a 10-year bond, uh, where, regardless of where the site is, I think the time is now to move the price forward. And it is fiscally responsible because it is in our five-year plan, and we are, we are ready to go and wait a long time. And I, I would support voting tonight to move the project forward because it does fit within our capital plan. Oh, Mary, I agree with that. Thank you. Um, I did because um, I always try and figure out well, what does it mean for me. And um, so I did contact Joe Mancini and um, Nick Mason from the Board of Finance. I said, Joe, I said to them, guys, what does this mean for me, average Joe taxpayer? What are we talking about? And um, if a senior center costs, um, we bond out for 10 years on a 5-point million project. The cost per year is $625,000, and that assumes a 3% interest rate. This translates into about $50 per year, or $4 per household. 
to do that. Right now, when you say it fits within the debt ceiling, what that means, what's going to happen, talking with Joe Mancy, I know this is really complicated, and <coughs> I'm going to do my best to explain it, and I'm sure Nick and Joe could do it better. But we've bonded out for a long period on the high school, and we're paying that off still. And that's going to drop off. And the minute that drops off, we can then bond for the high school. So what the net effect to the taxpayer is a no no change in taxes. Now for you can center. say, for, for the senior center, now you say, well, okay, no change in taxes, but we could actually save money if we didn't do it. And what would that savings be? That would be $50 a year or $4 um, a month. If we went with $8 million, because some of the estimates are coming in at um, $8 million, um, and, and we'll do have to double check the numbers because I asked them to do this very quickly. And I think um, Joe was using an assumption of 12,000 homes and Nick was using an assumption of 8,500 homes. So I'll have to get clarification. But he, what Nick came up was on 8 million using the same assumption of 3%, it would be 89 per household per year. So in terms of what the costs are and what it means to you and me, we're talking less than 100 a year, which is not to say it's not significant. It is. I know people who are living on a fixed income, that's a lot of money. Um, but in terms of what it will mean for your taxes, if the high school bonding drops off, your taxes will stay flat. You could save anywhere, let's just say 50 to 100 a year, or oh, someone's going to have to help me with the math, but less than $10 a month you'd be saving. So in terms of that, in terms of the actual costs, and then I just wanted to say I spoke with Elizabeth Estes' office today because um, there's a lot of talk about, well, how can we get money? Kudos to John for getting some money from the state, for Mary, for your efforts. And SD's office is going to be looking into federal grants to assist us with that as well. So there are opportunities to even reduce that spending. So the question is, well, do we want to do this? Do we care enough to do this? Do we see our needs going unmet? Um, is there something we want to put our resources to? And it, are these resources we can afford as a community? Um, we know that seniors are a vibrant part of the community. When they stay here, they don't add to the cost of the schools. You know, they intergenerational things. I mean, I think one of the comments made tonight, which was really struck me as wonderful, was gone are the days of uh, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. I want to do. We're a community. We take care of everyone. We're going to take care of our kids. We're going to take care of our seniors. We're going to take care of families that are starting out and who are never going to get a pension that our seniors are getting, who are never going to get the same amount of Social Security. We have to take care of them, too. We are a community. We have to take care of everyone. And so that's when we think about this. We're not thinking about any one segment. We're thinking what's best for our community because we're all going to be there. We're all going to be young people starting out. We're all going to be middle age. Some of us will have children, some of us won't. We're all going to be seniors. And so it's a continuum. Life's a circle. And so what's going to make a healthy community? And that's sort of how I look at it. And then can we afford it? So we have to look at, and I know I'm kind of rambling a bit because I'm not feeling that well. But <laughs> so um, well, I think your point was well taken, Lisa. It's $50 based on the numbers per year um, with a 10-year bond. It's in our capital plan. We haven't, we don't have a site so we can't get grants. So that's $50. Or a, or a budget. Right. We already have a half a million dollars, uh, thanks to Ensign Bickford, thanks to uh, the state funds from John Hampton. Um, so once we have a site, once we have a design, then we can go after grants. And we know we're really good at getting grants. Uh, so, you know, that is further going to be reduced. So um, I think our motion, I think the motion tonight that i like to make is that we accept the Public Building Committee's recommendation uh, that we uh, we eliminate the Bushy Hill Stratton site. I think it's important to put that on the record yep. because I don't think that serves our community. We spent a lot of money, a lot of time looking at walkable, livable, making sure that our transportation is walkable. Spent a lot of money building sidewalks in the center of town, uh, sp building, you know, spending a lot of money on the center. So I think first of all, my motion would be that we um, eliminate the Bushy Hill Stratton site, that we focus on. Mm -hmm. Uh, two things I'd like to see. One is, I know Eno uh, cannot be a full uh, senior center with the, the cost would be too high and the build out would not be accommodating. I'd like to see uh, what level of uh, renovations at Eno we could accommodate to use that building. I think something has to be done. It's not usable for 
anybody right now because it just doesn't work, the parking doesn't work. So I'd like to look at two things. I'd like to accept the Public Building Committee report, eliminate Bushy Hill Stratton, uh, look at the, the amount of build out for Eno for future use and a new site uh, in the center of town. And I'd ask the Public Building Committee to come back and not be um, bound by the um, not publicly owned restriction. I'd like you to specifically look at uh, anything in the center of town. And that frees the Public Building Committee to talk to existing property owners. Uh, I know we have done that and I won't, I, I won't divulge confidential conversations. I know what the answer will be because I had those conversations, uh, but I would like the public to know what those are. Yes. And, um, and I would like um, the state properties to be explored. And I do think we need to move this. I do think we need to move it tonight. So that would be my motion. There, I would add a friendly amendment to that. It, as you evaluate Eno, you know, a couple of things that I would want specifically looked at and evaluated would be, um, can we make it light filled? Because I know that there are some questions in terms of their existing windows that are high up. Can they be moved down? No, they can't. But they can't. Uh, We've already gone there. Okay. okay. But, if you, could put that but in the if you could put that in the report, I want to make sure that there's a covered entry, handicapped accessible. I want a full evaluation. Is Can this be handicapped accessible? Well, it can't be. We're done. Because I don't see any point in having a senior center that people can't get into. I do want to Extra. comment, if I could, Lisa, on that. Uh, the handicapped bathrooms, one of the beauty, the beautiful things about Eno is, was a gift from the Eno family. We can't forget that beautiful gift that we were given. Right. But it comes with restrictions. Sure. I think some of the frustrations that Don experienced in the bathroom was because we couldn't find the doors that met the historic sure. requirements yeah. and the marble that uh, was going to be installed. We couldn't just <coughs> in, in, put in any doors. And I know we were frustrated, Don was frustrated, but we had to meet the letter of the law. We had to meet the historic respect the, of the building. And so, you know, we want to honor the gift and we don't want to overuse it and over abuse it. And I think that's what we're wrestling with. What's the most we can push that building to accommodate our needs? And if it doesn't serve the seniors, then we got to, we got to have a site ready to go. And as I, I mean, the other things I really am asking the committee to discuss is really examine whether there's any way to get that. I don't think 60 parking spots is adequate. Um, and room for increased programming, make sure that we have an adequate increased programming and entrances and exits on two levels. There needs to be, as you, if the elevator goes out, on the two levels. So, Mike, do we have a second? Is that your second? Yes. I have a motion to have a second. Questions? Well, I would also like them to consider the operating costs as part of this ongoing discussion of the overall cost. And I know that Bridge has done some of that, but the different sites are going to have different operating costs, and those are going to affect our budget year to year. So, you know, to Lisa's point, when we're talking about how much it's going to cost us as taxpayers every year to run and staff this new center or increased size center, whatever we end up doing, you know, there are going to be additional costs that are not going to go away with the bond. They are going to continue to be there. Um, and I think we have to be aware of that. And, and maybe it will take some input from the, the current senior center staff at social services to say if we're going to have, you know, a health services area, someone has to staff that. You know, if we're going to do, you know, that those are going to be costs that need to be considered. I just will um, point out that we did just approve additional square footage for the Board of Ed and that that question was not asked. I uh, absolutely, so and, I, fairness, and I think it I should. Mean, yeah. In fairness, if you're going to ask, you know, uh, what you should ask it of every every bill. Every I would new. love to ask that of the board of it if I had, <laughs> had that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't asked during the. Quickly, reference for the health care. So uh -huh. that's done by outsource. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cost the time yeah. So we can get that. Well, that's good. But, but all but, of those know, things are going to be yeah. ongoing cost, and that right. it's not just the CIP budget; right. it's the operating. And budget. same thing with the library, the square footage that the library. You know, I mean, I, mm -hmm. points well taken. But I think if you're going to ask that, you're going to. I think that's an important valuation for all new projects, not just the senior. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's there, so we're <laughs> we're, we're looking at it. Yeah, I, I do as well. I just want to um, thank everyone who came out tonight because um, I look in this audience and I see my friends. And I see people who agree and disagree and I love you both equally. Um, and this is a tough decision and I appreciate the comments were so respectful of each other, so polite, so substantive. It was, it, it makes me proud to be in this position to have you helping us make the best decision. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of this community. And I really want to emphasize that. And then at the end of the day, once we make our choice, 
whatever it is. There are going to be some people who think we made the wrong choice and people who think we made the right choice. I hope that after we make the choice, we come together and say, okay, this is what it is. It wasn't my first choice, but I'm going to work like heck to make it the best we can make it. Excellent. And that's what I'm hoping will happen at the end of all this. So again, thank you to everyone here, because as I look out, there are so many people I love, so thank you. You're here. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and I would like to echo Lisa, echo Lisa's comments. I think what we've done here tonight has um, been a compromise of people's input, and so um, it's hard for us to make these choices. And, you know, we have people calling us and stopping us in Fitzgerald's and, um, you know, uh, talking to us along the way, and, and yet as you come into these meetings, the crux of, of um, a lot of this I hate to say it, a lot of people don't watch SCTV, SCTV. They're not listening to all the great input that you folks are providing. And so we try to go out and share that with people as well so we can educate them so they're not making decisions that aren't, um, aren't well informed as well. So, um, And I do just want to clarify, too, my comments regarding the capital project is simply to say that we know tonight we're here to make this decision about the Senior Center, but you all realize that we make decisions that impact all aspects of our community. And I know we're talking about this being a senior center, but in the reality of it, it will be a community center. It will have the best and highest use for the seniors, but um, as we talk about a lot of things that are economic development driven, it's all, and a woman made a great comment about sort of the way that things are changing now. They're changing back towards mixed use, towards the livability of our downtown center, towards the integration of generations, um, working together, playing together, recreating together. And, um, you know, Lisa's work with a great program in the high schools is bringing the seniors together with the kids. All that stuff is what this should be all about. And so, thank you. Any further discussion? One more. I got, I got one more. Um, I agree with a lot of the comments that were made tonight. Um, Ona. <laughs> she didn't want to talk before now. <laughs> Busted. Um, that's why we have fun. Um, even though our. Uh, we are planning on, on bonding the money for the senior slash community center in 2016. Um, I am concerned about the impact with not knowing what's going on with the Hartford. You know, we can plan on spending half a million dollars, but suddenly we've got a $2 million hole in the budget. Add this back into it because we're adding the dollars back in. I'm not saying it's not a good project. I'm not saying the seniors don't deserve it. They do, but the whole community deserves it. And, and that's where we've got to go. I have that concern. My understanding is this will still come back to the Board of Selectmen. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and also to the voters. Yeah, and just the point in is the form there of a are, referendum. This is yes. the least of your problems. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't but I'm not going to pile on top. I don't mean it facetiously, but there's a lot of other projects, road paving, uh, that cost half of what this project costs. Yeah. Uh, school, we are talking about uh, millions 9. and millions of dollars in school projects. So I understand. This is this is, and I, I don't mean to be facetious because I'm serious. It's this is this is already in in the plan two years out. We, if we have problems with the Hartford, and we're working hard to address and work with them. Hmm. We have a problem tomorrow, hmm. not two years out. We have plenty of time to turn this boat around if a problem occurs. Uh, before 2016 occurs. So I think we're being very responsible, and I appreciate you raising that, Mike, but there are a lot, there's 2014, 15, before we get to 16. No, oh, I, I can do the math in the calendar, no, no <laughs> doubt. But everybody needs to understand yeah. that these are incremental steps, and, and we're headed down a path. I think it's the right path. I think looking at a variety of sites, I think somewhere in the center of town is my personal opinion where this belongs, whether it's, uh, I forget the, fancy term that Rich used about the uh, differential sites, moving it to various sites. I, I like that idea. Distributed um, services. Distributed services. services. That's why he's the man he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but uh, you'd be answering my question, so Thank I'm okay. You, Thank you. Oh, we have a motion, we have a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Did everybody vote? One, two, three, four, four five. Okay. Five votes uh, in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you want to I don't all leave. <laughs> I want to leave. <laughs> uh, moving very quickly, uh, we have a. You guys can go. Uh, She's joking. To modify the town's banner policy, I just want to put this in perspective. Um, uh, we currently, I think, an update. You've got an update. We currently, the policy we currently follow is that the town. Uh, does not charge okay? the banners across Route 10. Those are allowed uh, to be used by any nonprofit for town activities only. So that's very clear. Um, the Performing Arts Board, when they were a town board, installed the, the light posts along Ironhurst Boulevard to um, advertise only the concert series. So that's the second policy we've been following. Uh, the Performing Art Board, when they were a town board, and I clarify, um, installed the banner across Iron Horse Boulevard uh, to advertise only, there's <coughs> only policies, um, only town projects. And then finally, the Route 10 uh, banners. Those were uh, proposed by Main Street. Uh, they were supposed to be used only for town activities. Uh, we asked Main Street to uh, administer the uh, banners they were they did minister the banners they did charge uh, for the banners and put them up and the town staff put those up uh, last year if you recall the team of commerce asked as a nonprofit to put commercial uh, use to use the banner poles uh, they did we did allow it as a one-time exception because uh, it, it did uh, not violate, but it was not consistent with our policy uh, to only allow nonprofits for town sponsored activities. The chamber did charge for the use of the banners. They did, they did uh, receive the revenue. The town received no revenue uh, from the sale of the banners. So uh, the Shrewsbury Chamber has um, asked us to uh, change the Route 10 banner policy. Um, I strongly recommend not changing the policy uh, because number one. Uh, it is town property, and uh, the town uh, needs to control the property. Number two, uh, if we allow any nonprofit to use uh, the banner poles, then we uh, have no control over what the message will be. Um, and so if the town is going to use the poles, we should derive the revenue, um, and we shouldn't allow uh, other nonprofits to take the funding. Uh, the board asked um, town attorney Bob DiCrescenzo to be here tonight. Uh, they had some questions on the banner policy, and so, uh, Bob, thank you for your patience and being here. And uh, <laughs> I just will ask Bob, I asked Bob for a legal opinion. I think, Tom, that was provided to yes, the board. That's correct. Um, so I did get a legal opinion from council, uh, which recommends uh, some issues that we would have if we did change the policy. So, Bob, if you could just quickly summarize uh, your recommendations, and then we'll open up for discussion. Yes, thank you. Uh, I was asked to look at this, and I want to start by distinguishing between the banner that goes over Hop Meadow Street and the 19 banners on the poles, because the rules appear to be somewhat different. In a nutshell, because it's Route 10, because it's a state highway, it's subject to the state encroachment permit process, which brings it under the regulation, which I believe I provided or referenced in my letter. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the uh, state DOT district Jack. has uh, will apply the uh, oh state goodness. regulations it's not yours. <laughs> to any request uh, to use the banners, uh, the banner pole locations. Um, and I suggested in my letter that any uh, any policy that expands beyond town-sponsored events. Uh, should be subject to review by the DOT because ultimately they're the ones that will decide um, <clears throat> whether or not a particular banner or a series of banners can be hung on the poles uh, on Route 10. I think you are free to write a policy uh, that s makes the change requested. However, that policy is subject to DOT regulation. I also put in my letter a cautionary note about because it is a town facility, it's subject to the requirements and restrictions of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution uh, and the cases that interpret, and I believe they would ultimately, if it were ever challenged, it would the banners would be found to be what's called a limited public forum, as distinguished from a, uh, a general public forum. Town hall is a general public forum, place where open debate takes place. And, that's where the highest level of scrutiny, scrutiny and the lowest re level of regulation as to the content of speech applies. And then the other extreme is a, a non-public forum where 
uh, just the opposite is true. Somewhere in the middle is a limited public forum, and I believe the banners would be that. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you were to change the policy, I believe it would be very important to draft a set of policy guidelines that were dictated by the various cases that uh, from the United States Supreme Court and the district courts that define the restrictions municipalities and public entities can put in place on content within limited public forums. Um, you cannot distinguish, in a limited public forum, you cannot distinguish based on content. Right. You cannot place a prior restraint on a banner or any other message within a, you can, however, distinguish between classes of organizations that are eligible for use of the limited public forum. Let me give you a quick example. <clears throat> you can say, as part of your policy, no political organizations may use the banner because you, as the legislative body, don't want political speech on those banners, and I think that would be upheld. However, you can't say, if you allow political organizations use the banners, you can't say one party can use it and another party can't. I mean, that sounds, that kind of rubs against the grain no matter, you know, that's simple to understand. Not so simple, though, is um, uh, minor parties aimed at one particular issue that organize and get status under our statutes that want to promulgate a message on your banners that you don't want promulgated on the Main Street. It may be an issue-orientated party that technically would be a political organization. So unless the policy is narrowly crafted to exclude the class of political organizations, I'm only picking on political organizations because, you know, there's lots of other types of organizations that would fall in this category as well. You could not limit the speech, the content of the speech on that poll based on the content of the speech. You can limit the type of organizations that are available. If you broaden the policy, all of these forum-based analysis and restrictions have to be taken into consideration for the policy that's drafted. Ultimately, though, it's um, once you do that, I suggest having the DOT district review them because ultimately they're, along with the zoning commission, they're, that's the entity that's going to decide whether a banner can or cannot be put on the poll. As to the banner across the street, the regulations I think are a little bit stricter, and I think those are allowed for town-sponsored functions. I personally have never seen a banner across the street that has any kind of general um, business purpose to it. And I think you know now from looking at the research and other things that DOT will allow a banner to be hung by a private nonprofit organization, such as the Chamber. They will allow that banner to be sponsored but they will not allow that banner to contain too much of a commercial message because commercial uh, uh, commercial messages are not allowed within the, um, the, the area regulated by the DOT. Here's my concern, Bob. I just, um, and the reason I, I'm glad you're here is that uh, the town staff, we have very limited staff, and they are responsible for putting these banners up and taking them down. Uh, the banners have been used, uh, so they're town property. What's happening now is the banners are now being resold by the private nonprofits, mm -hmm. and the revenue is going to the nonprofit. So it's becoming right. a revenue source for the nonprofits that right. use the town property. Right. Uh, there's a concern that if one, let's use your political party example, let's say uh, one political party comes in and they reserve the banners and they put a nice message out, nothing offensive, that says, you know, keeps things very beautiful. Right. But they sell them for $500 and the banners cost $25 and that's a revenue source. Mm -hmm. The other party comes in and says, well, now we want the banners, mm -hmm. but there's not enough time to give those banners until you know, another, another year passes. So you've, you've given one political party the benefit of using town property to generate revenue. That's right. my concern. And so you know, I think the intent of the banners was to publicize town events, um, was to have the town do it as a public service, not to generate revenue for any particular nonprofit. And uh, you know, perhaps we've got to the point where there, there's too much of a good thing if we can't regulate. I just I think the town is going to be in a very bad position to allow one nonprofit to generate revenue from town property and not other. Because once folks see that they can sell the banners for four hundred and fifty dollars or three hundred fifty, which they were recently sold for, mm -hmm. um, this is going to be a revenue source that everybody's going to want to get in on, and the town's going to be trying to administer something that doesn't benefit us, that costs us, that costs town staff time, and the content may be 
even offensive. Yeah, I, th those are all policy considerations for this board to weigh and consider and, and whether or not the policy should be amended. Uh, what I'd add to that from, from my point of view is, again, the content regulation of saying this message from this private organization is acceptable, that message from that private organization is not acceptable. And I don't want to overstate this because, you know, these cases when brought are very complicated and expensive to defend and you should work very hard to avoid them, but distinguishing between one message and the other is what, no matter what policy you go with, that's what we really have to try to avoid. And placing any administrative uh, person in the, uh, the decision-making process of saying, well, that's not, uh, that, we don't want that banner. And you could not, for instance, delegate to Jerry, you know, Jerry, you know, you can make the decision whether a banner goes up or not. It has to be according to a, an objective policy that you will have to draft. Yeah, I, question. Yeah. I, yeah, and I guess it's really not a question. It's just I, I'm thinking of as you're explaining all this, and we just talked about things like operating budgets when it came to the senior center, and we're talking about, although we like to see you often, we don't want to <laughs> see you more often if we can avoid that. Um, I, I think this is is going down a road that gets away from the original intent, as Mary said. Um, and this isn't an anti-business decision to the chamber per se, but I do see, um, you know, we provide funding for Main Street. If, if, you know, they're using that as a source of revenue, it's something that, that they can help offset their budget with and we contribute to their budget, then right. that is, uh, in their, spon you know, it's town-sponsored events, that's one thing. Um, but there definitely is a can of worms. Um, and back to my days of selling advertising, there was always that absolute, you know, you know, equal airtime scenario, and there's no way to guarantee equal mm -hmm. poll time to, um, you know, if it's the space is bought up. You, you um, just, as a legislative body, you just can't make subjective judgments about the content of messages when yeah. it comes to That's right. public property. And you can, like I said earlier, you can eliminate entire classes of organizations. And political organizations, good place to start because that's the highest level of speech where court's going to give it the most scrutiny. And if you let one in, you cannot, prob probably cannot distinguish between this political message and that political message. So you say, okay, political organizations, that's easy. Then you say, well, religious organizations. <laughs> it's not so easy. I right, actually, I would disagree. I would want to see more information on that. If we, I don't think the sport is going that. But if you eliminate a class of people because you want to prohibit that speech I, I that think, has me a little worried but yeah I, I think that would uh, and believe me I'm the first to say yeah. if you want to do this we've got to look at it more carefully right. and more deeply than I did in this letter but I ultimately I think that would be okay because these cases come up all over the country but political organizations then religious organizations both of which are private nonprofit organizations religious organizations same principle again protected speech both parts of the First Amendment. So yeah. um, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I don't, don't want to get into that. My concern is that we have a consistent policy so yes. that we don't have confusion, you know, on the part of either our businesses or our nonprofits or our volunteer groups as to what's allowable and what's not. And you know, like Mary had said last time, as we drive down Hot Meadow, we have the overheads, we have them along the side, we have different boards, and it's a lot to look at. And I want to make sure that we're being as fair as possible and as consistent as possible with everybody who has to drive down the street and look at every one of those signs. And I think, I, I agree, I, I don't think we should be in the business of controlling right. speech. And you can't delegate the responsibility away. You can't say, well, we've given that to this organization. Right. To, it's your yeah, poll, yeah. your obligation. And I, so. and I think that's a good point, uh, Cheryl, because we, we were consistent. I think right. when the chamber came in, it didn't fit our policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we said no. Uh, the chamber came in and asked for a one-time exception because they felt they had gone down the road and discussing uh, that, they, that anyone could use the banners, and mm -hmm. so they felt in fairness that we would allow one time. But I think that one time exception has showed us the can of worms that right. we would face yeah. no, I agree. Um, you know, if we were to, to proceed down this path. I think it would be helpful uh, for us to vote tonight because uh, I think it's important that Jerry has some direction. I think that the mm -hmm. policy that we, uh, we have works. Uh, we, um, the only question, two clarifications, I think one would be to um, make sure that um, 
the board is comfortable that the Main Street uh, program can continue to uh, to organize the banners for town events if the board's comfortable with that that has been our consistent policy yeah. um, and two um, the performing arts board is no longer a town committee but they are a town um, they are town sponsored events and the revenue the town does get a piece of the revenue so that would be just a clarification to make sure that those two entities uh, would be the only entities that would be allowed to continue yeah. to use the polls. So that would be, <coughs> bless you, bless a, you. Re, a re, uh, reaffirmation of what we're currently doing. Okay, now I need to yeah, I'd just like to add that in both cases, you're talking about using the banners to advertise activities that take place on town-owned property. Exactly. Right. Yeah. exactly. So we would follow the policy that we've always had. Mm -hmm. And I think Jerry sense, and Jerry, maybe you could talk a little bit about that, but your, your feeling was that four times a year is probably the max that we we should have these Thank banners you. Because otherwise it becomes too much Does anyone um, else want to noise pollution. It becomes too hard on staff to raise them and lower them. <laughs> and uh, it really loses the effectiveness of having them. So I don't know if you want to speak to that, Jerry. Yeah, I, I would say I, I would agree with Mary. And, I, and I, I do hear from Bruce when they've been up longer than the eight weeks, I think, that we have or eight or that it seems to be, you know, it's too much. You know, they, yeah. need, they need to come down. And at the same time, you know, just from a management standpoint, um, you know, I, I think the four times a year is, is certainly manageable. Um, we could always do more, but I think that would be certainly, for us, more manageable. What kind of motion do you want? Uh, just a motion to uh, to not change the policy uh, that the town's One more quick, Bob, are yeah. you comfortable with the fact that this policy is consistent enough with the DOT policy that we're not going to have too many conflicts between yeah. our I'm comfortable with that I think this is the type of policy that DOT sees in very a lot of towns mm -hmm. uh, most towns have state roads somewhere within their boundaries They're usually in the Main Street area or many are in the Main Street area and you'll see a lot of banners over the road and on the poles but in my experience uh, every one of them is of this type where they were advertising town sponsored events and if DOT has a problem with a particular banner, but I don't think they have to date. No, not to date. We, yeah. And we run everything by, um, yeah, it, by the DOT before they're installed. Yeah, the right. town has to get an encroachment. Yeah, just for consistency. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, I think it's consistent. The same. I, I think the way it's been operated is perfectly permissible with DOT regulation. Thanks for your efforts in mm -hmm. reviewing this. I know this is a com uh, First Amendment rights are complicated. It's not. They're very yeah. interesting. It's they interesting. are interesting. They're fun. <laughs> they're fun. <laughs> but we've had enough. In a geeky kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay. So there isn't uh, the two points you had made about Main Street organizing events and allowing PAC and on town property. Is that? It's just taking a quick that's glance through this again. That's, been, that's not been a formal policy. It's been town sponsored events. That's been our procedure internally because. Uh, Again, Main Street was selling advertising. It was not appropriate for the town to sell right. banners to pay. The town was not going to buy the banners, and the town was not going to sell advertising to pay for the banners. So Main Street, since they were a town-sponsored uh, organization, they were tasked with the administration of the process. Okay, so we don't think we need to amend any of this stuff. No, okay. Oh. I just wanted to have um, right? an endorsement that the board is comfortable with the procedures that we're following. Uh, one, that Main Street will continue to coordinate the banners uh, the sale and two since the performing arts board is no longer a town entity even it's still uh, consistent to using uh, the banners to allow we still have to validate that they can use the banners in order to promote the town events so if the board has no problem with that you don't need that in the motion I guess we just need a motion to not change the policy so that do we even need a motion for that um, I think it would be helpful because I think it would show the chamber that we've seriously considered the request then but uh, it's not personal to them we just don't want to change the policy so we need right. a motion to deny the chamber's request no, to change just the policy motion to, or to, to, just, to, re motion to re reaffirm the policy okay. <laughs> yeah. adopted. someone wants to make that motion okay i'll make that motion i'll second that any further discussion uh, i do I, i've <laughs> been thinking about this i i really have a problem with this we, we have two groups that represent businesses within the town one being main street one being the chamber uh, main street received funding from the town the chamber does not right. the chamber actually paid for the original brackets bracketry i guess would be the technical term to put up there and then donated them to main street i really feel we're tr like we're treating two different business groups differently I understand the the discussion points and, and I see the the flow of the logic 
it just seems wrong. And and, and yeah. I'm going to be voting against it, but I'm fine where yeah. we're going. But we have to be consistent. Yeah, and I and I appreciate that. The um, you know I'm no, my alternative suggestion would be that the Parks and Rec Commission uh, coordinate the banners, and uh, that any revenue would go to the Parks and Rec Commission. Uh, probably uh, we wouldn't do a lot of the banners, quite frankly, because we wouldn't have the time of the staff. Simsbury celebrates. Uh, the Hartford Symphony would want to do those, and Simsbury celebrates uh, might want to do that. The difference is the um, Main Street coordinated the uh, town sponsored events. The chamber uh, didn't have town sponsored events, and the revenue, there was a significant difference in the cost. There was yeah. a, uh, I think the chamber charged 350, and Main Street charged, I think, 150. 150. So the balance would go, uh, the balance went to the organization. So your, your point is well taken, Mike. I have, I would support uh, the, the town uh, coordinate the banners if you felt more comfortable with that. Because I, I, I feel very strongly that we can't change the policy. No, and, I, and, 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 I, and I don't think that we, um, you know, we can, you know, in, in fairness to the Performing Arts Board, they're not a town entity either. So mm -hmm. if you're going to be fair, then we have to say is that the Parks and Rec will coordinate the banners, and uh, they'll either happen or they won't based mm -hmm. on the amount of time that town staff yeah. has to get sponsors. I, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, you've got I, a motion a on the floor in a second, so I, I'm just trying to have discussion. Yeah, no, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to support that. If you uh, want to make an amendment. Make, if you want to add that as an amendment. I'm not sure how I'd phrase that. Honest. Can I comment while you're thinking, maybe? Please. Um, and I appreciate your position on this. I, um, I get, I again, go back to sort of the operation, and we're talking about budgets and things like that, and culture parts and rec being strapped, and, and their budget being what it is, and, um, you know, the, the tasks that they have at hand. And um, I, I would support the original motion for that reason. I think that... Um, it's it goes it goes by way of those concerns that we've had around I, I uh, take I your you. point Mike I really do um, I I think the relationship that the town has with Main Street is is different, no, it's, different. it's and you know we have relied on them to do some of the town's work essentially you know we are we're funding them and they are in a different position I don't disagree with you that both organizations promote business in town and that's a good thing but I don't think that we can transfer all of that responsibility that Main Street ha has taken on itself. And I and I, I know, I see your point, that they did pay for the brackets and... Thanks. <laughs> no. No, I know, but that they, you know, there's a claim yeah. there. It's yeah. true. But no, I think Mike has a good point. Yeah, he I, does, I yeah. think that uh, for this year, I would support uh, Main Street and the Performing Arts Board continue to, to do, use them the way they have, but I would ask for an accounting. Yes. Uh, to come back to the board so we can see how much revenue they're generating from our property because it is a town property. Oh, yeah. And uh, perhaps we can offset uh, those costs some other way next year. So I think I think we we owe that to the taxpayers to find no. out what revenue is being generated. Yeah. So uh, I think your point is well taken. I would support it. I would uh, for this year. I'll I'd like to just since we're already in the middle of the season. Um, allow the policy to stand, but I, I support your motion to get uh, to get an accounting, and so we can have a further discussion. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. No. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. We appreciate that. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Uh, next yeah. item is a very quick resolution delegating oversight of the Squadron Line School Main Office Project, which was approved by the uh, voters of Simsbury to the Public Building Committee. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Oh, did Any you guys? Opposed? <laughs> Are you guys keeping up over there? Go ahead and vote, and then yeah. I gotta bring something up. <laughs> you did. We just got <laughs> in. Okay. I know it's 10:20, right. but you guys gotta keep up. Aye. So. Mary, excuse me. I just realized Lisa pointed out I'm a member of the chamber, and I should have recused myself. Oh. Um. I, I think you're okay, Mike, because uh, you don't have a conflict, because you... I did disclose it on my... You did disclose it. And but you're not getting any that. financial benefit, have you? No. 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 Okay. no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's right. like this, another paying job. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I appreciate that. Okay. So Thank noted for, for the record. Okay. Well, just you. Lisa's same. got your back. Right. Yeah. I would, I don't know, I would... Uh, Robert's Rules of Orders, can you rescind the vote? 
if Mike feels more comfortable. Uh, or can he change it? Why don't we do that? Why don't we? All right, I would need a motion to amend the, the, the agenda. Okay. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Make to the go back to item number C. I will make a motion to amend the agenda to go back to item number C. Letter, okay. letter C. Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, the motion. Can I have a motion to reaffirm the town's existing policy? So moved. Second. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Any recusals? Any abstention? One abstention. I will abstain. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's just you. clean it that way. I appreciate your disclosure. Thank you. Uh, next item is to approve the resolution delegating oversight of the Henry James renovation phase 1A main office security project to the public building. I'll move. Second. Any questions? I don't have a comment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Yeah, next good. item is yeah. to discuss and possible action regarding CLMP rate increase. Town received a letter that we um, that CLMP is uh, looking to increase rates. Uh, the rates are significant increases. Um, they are looking. Uh, they have set, provided us a list of explanations of why they're looking for the increase. The increase is significant. It's really a 5.9 percent uh, increase in revenues over and above their current revenues. I have drafted a letter um, that I would like to send to. CLMP uh, strongly objecting to this on behalf of our residents and certainly the timing of this since we fi finalized our budget and uh, we're not notified of this increase prior to uh, completing our budget and uh, I would ask the board to endorse uh, the letter so that we could send it from the entire board. So. I will move that. I will second that. Any further discussions? All in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is to approve. The resignation of Lon Recky is an alternate member of the Warren Commission. I'll move that. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, next motion is to appoint Von Recky as a regular member of the Zoning Commission. Move that. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next is to appoint Sarah. That's M O C G K yeah, Mock. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. M O C G K. Uh, was there an resignation? What, what, is that replacing what Diana Fisk, right? Yes, it is. Diana Fisk. Yep. I think we we'll put that in the uh, motion. It, it is there. It's uh, library in succession of Diana yeah. Fisk. It's not on the uh, it's motion. It's yeah. Oh, okay. I like that in the motion. Yeah, that's right. uh, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to appoint Sarah Mock in. Um, uh, to the regular member position of library board trustees, uh, taking the place of Diana Fisk. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, next item is an update on the Hartford Land Use Study. We have a meeting out. scheduled uh, for June. We also have the form based code that has been um, on, is on our website and that will be distributed. It is. Um, it is a result of a lot of hard work and from our consultant. It is on the website www.sinjay-ct.gov. Uh, the Zoning Commission will receive comments and a public hearing on June 16th. This is a very important zone change and code change. Uh, we will have gateway plan and the consultants there to answer any questions. So I put it on tonight's agenda so the public will have notice that June 16th, uh, the new form-based code will be available for discussion. Uh, report back after that. Uh, just a reminder that the town hall summer hours start next week. We'll be looking for uh, feedback on, um, from the public as to how those hours are. They're uh, temporarily approved by the board after the summer season. Mary, I would just ask that the record reflect that I stepped out during the discussion of the Thank Harper. Thank you. Uh, the record will reflect that Lisa have her, uh, removed herself from the discussion of the Harper Land Use Study. Thank you. You gotta go watch my uh, back. <laughs> I did want a motion to amend the agenda for purposes of uh, a letter I received, a designation of the Sinsbury Community Farm as um, on the state register of historic places. Can I have a motion to I'll move that. Uh, amend the agenda. agenda. I'll move that for discussion of the designation of Sinsbury Community you. Farm. Do we have a second? Oh, second. second. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Um, I received a letter on May 23rd that I copied the board on that um, the nomination to put Simsbury on the State Register of Historic Places will be considered at the June 4th meeting of the Historic Preservation Council. Um, this was a, a recommendation that, the, that uh, the town did not seek and we were not notified of it until I received the letter. Um, we were, I think the community farm was approached by members of uh, the Department of Economic and Community Development uh, that this designation was available and would uh, allow the town to uh, apply for grants of if, this, if this designation should occur. Upon receipt of the letter, I did um, have Hiram Peck call the State Historic Preservation Office um, to find out what the impact would be on the town and the farm. Um, this designation, we uh, received the following conversation that the designation is strictly honorary, contains no restrictions. It allows the town to apply for future matching grants of up to $200,000. Um, it's the last batch of such designations that the town did not want to pursue this designation. Uh, there would, we, we don't know when we would be eligible again, and uh, there are no a negative aspects of the designation. So while there was some discussions about possibly applying for this, um, a letter, we did receive a letter that we were considered um, without any previous knowledge. And so there is a hearing on June 4th. I do want to bring it to the board's attention, the public's attention. Is, uh, is there any objection to this hearing going forward? I'm, I'm assuming the community farm uh, coming. Yes, they sought this designation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to put it on the agenda just to let the public know there is a plan. Um, thank you. Uh, next item is acceptance of the regular meeting minutes of May 12th. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Any questions, comments, changes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Oh, aye. Sorry. <laughs> Any abstentions? <laughs> Just checking for the <laughs> Check her for a pulse. Somebody shake Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to scare her. Thank you. Um, we'll move to personnel items. I know you have some action items. So we'll <laughs> can move those quickly. I later. will move them quickly. Okay, personnel subcommittee met. Uh, we had a special meeting, um, yes, was it yesterday? Yesterday, to review job descriptions for library, planning, department, culture parks, and recs. All have been... Um, approved by the unions and add no additional cost to the town. After discussion, the personnel subcommittee unanimously approved all recommendations and is presenting them to the full board for your consideration. The positions include the teen librarian, um, which includes planning, directing, implementing, and evaluating the library's teen services. It includes outreach, and it also includes duties to all library patrons as outlined in the reference librarian job description. The library service assistance children's with the upcoming retirement of the children's department circulation assistant on June 30th. We have an opportunity to create a new job description that incorporates technology and the current needs of the library. It's responsible for planning and implementing programming for children and families, includes outreach, also includes circulation, customer service. Administrative Secretary 1, library part-time. During the budget process, we reduced this position to part-time from 35 to 17 hours per week in order to move funding to front-facing services with the teen librarian position. New position has the same duties as the full-time with additional language or regarding required knowledge, skills, abilities, and required physical and mental effort. Assistant Town Planner. With the retirements of two members of the planning staff, the town looked to update and restructure the planning department to better meet town needs. This new title effectively renames the zoning compliance officer planning analyst position as the assistant town planner. Most of the substance of the position has been cha was changed last August when we approved the matrix of job description adjustments in the planning department. The new title reflects the actual duties and expectations, and we anticipate it will improve response and quality of the candidates anticipated to apply. The final one we considered was assistant golf course superintendent we added uh, under qualifications advanced knowledge of turf, turf graft turf grass disease identification and control fertilization practices insect identification and control and work experience and personal management and leadership it requires the individual to possess a Connecticut DEEP golf course or custom grounds license and be knowledgeable in safe use application and record keeping of pesticides per DEEP. I would um, ask that we have a motion to approve all the changes as one motion instead of going through individually if that's, um, if the board is comfortable with that. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I move that we accept all of the changes as proposed by the personnel subcommittee. Okay. As outlined in Lisa's report. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? 
want to thank you and the committee for excellent job in updating the job description for all the jobs are um, approved in the budget that was approved. And thank you to Tom and um, Sean Kimball who did um, the substance of the work. Much appreciated. And also to the library board and thank Lisa you. Kareem. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Seeing no further business before the board. Well, I have one. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. First, I want to thank everyone who participated in the tri Sinsbury event. It was a huge success. Mm -hmm. Kudos to um, Linda Schofield for our organization. It did bring in 75% seven, of the participants for, were from out of town, so which was Excellent. its goal. And then I just wanted to thank everyone who, Cheryl came and Mary to Senior Citizen Night, uh, Art Night at the high school. It was our most Big well, event. ever. ever. Biggest attended event. We had tons of kids. There was wonderful, huge success. So thank you. Thank That's you. it. I'm done. Well Let's done. go. All right. Can I have a motion to approve? Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I will, we're not approving okay. anything else. <laughs> I will make a motion to adjourn. A second. A second. All in favor. Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Right. Hey, is that, that's not our long, longest. Is that our longest? What? Well, we started at 630, so if you figured that in, that's oh, yeah. pretty, yeah. It's our longest.